We already been all around the boat. Yeah, it is. Those are the colors you want to put in your description. They do shooting. I wonder how many ships to get. I guess we're the, like the only one ship that gets in there, huh? This is like the normal stuff. St. Thomas. So are the, um, are they pushing us? So we don't have no barges pushing us around? Stand over the water. Ooh. Come here, look down. Somehow you can get out there. We haven't found that out. Hmm? You can get out there. It's interesting. today underwater you'll see
Beginner dive. Thank you. Classroom. You can bring your bag if you want and your clothes. Right. Um, and then when we come back, we'll get ready to go in the water. Okay. Right. I did read through the um, that book. Okay, good. The patty diving. And I'll hit. Um, I'll kind of go over a little bit more. Right. Of that with you guys. I figured that. We just had to get that first initial. Uh, you know. Almost eight years now. Uh, I'm originally from Texas, so there are a couple words that I might say a little funny, but like you guys are from Florida. Y'all is one of them. I'm from Texas, I too. I say pinch instead of pinch, so um, you guys should kind of be right there with me. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is go over diving, things that we're going to see in the water, things that I expect from you guys, and things that you guys can expect from me. All right. Um, our max depth that we're able to reach today as beginner divers is going to be 40 feet. Okay. All right, now that doesn't mean you have to be at 40 feet. The reef is going to kind of slant like so. So if we want to cruise up a little higher, that's totally fine. Or if we want to be down at the bottom closer to that 40 range, that's okay as well. It's just you two on the dive with me, so please don't feel like you're holding me up. I'm here for you guys, all right? So okay. we're going to progress through this um, as comfortably as you guys feel. All right, our dive time is 30 to 40 minutes, dependent upon how quickly we breathe through our air. I'll give you guys some pointers to help with that. That way we can maximize our time underwater. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Now this is going to sound like a lot of information I'm throwing at you. Please do not let it overwhelm you. Once we are in the water, um, if you guys can breathe and kick for me, I can pretty much take care of everything else for you guys. All right. Um, but if you guys do have questions, please let me know. All right. So how water pressure affects you. Water has weight, therefore it exerts pressure. So the deeper we go, the more pressure we are going to feel. Now this pressure has no effect on water and we're basically like giant walking water balloons for the most part. Um, so overall our bodies will be fairly okay at depth. However, we do have a couple air spaces that you'll need to do some special things for. So we have our ears and our sinuses, our lungs, and when your dive mask is on your face, that's gonna create an air pocket for us as well. 
Remember that unequalized air spaces can cause discomfort. It can be painful. We definitely don't want to fill any of that today. So on our descents, as we're going deeper and downward, we want to add air to these spaces. And then on our ascents, as we're coming back up, we want to let air escape out of these spaces. Now the first one you guys should be familiar with, it's your ears and your sinuses. So just like when you're on an airplane and you feel that pressure in your head or if you drive up high in the mountains, um, that's what it's going to feel like. So we're going to equalize that space by pinching our nostrils together and blowing out of our nose at the same time. Yep, and you'll feel that pop. Um, remember that you can't over equalize, so the more that we do it, the easier our dive will be. So we never get to that point of pain or discomfort. If you start to feel any pain or discomfort, stop. You don't want to continue downward. That's only going to make it worse. So you'll give me this sign. This means, hey, I have a problem. Okay. And then you'll point at your ear so I know it's an ear issue. I will then grab hold of you and I'm going to kick you up a couple feet. That's going to alleviate some of the pressure that we're under because now you're not as deep and you should be able to clear. All right. Um, if you're having issues, if you're able to get one ear and not the other, try switching hands. The difference in your grip can allow you to get, normally allow you to get the other ear that you couldn't clear. If you're still having issues, you can look up to the sky and then try to equalize. That's just going to open up that eustachian tube and typically that'll help as well. All right. Okay. If you want to do the big swallow method, you can. Just remember you're going to have a mouthpiece in between your teeth. So that one might be, might feel a little awkward, but it definitely is doable. All right. So every couple feet we want to make sure that we're equalizing I will look back at you and do this sometimes and that's just to remind you that now would be a good time to clear if you haven't already okay if you have clear then just ignore me all right um, now let's say that your ears are great at 25 feet we're trying to get to 35 feet and they won't clear we've tried switching looking up I'm gonna give you this sign this means we're gonna cruise at the 25 feet that we last felt our ears cleared and comfortable Okay, that way we can kind of slowly start to work it out a little bit as we continue swimming on the reef, okay. um, rather than spending the whole dive watching you go up, down, up, down, up, trying to get it cleared, right? Right. Um, so if this sign just means kind of stay at the depth that we're at, all right? Now for your mask, a lot of people get really nervous they're gonna get water in their mask. So they tighten on their mask super, super tight. As we descend, water pressure is gonna suction that to your face even tighter. So in some cases, people will come up with a bruise in the shape of their mask. So in order to avoid that, as we're going downward, if you feel it getting really tight right here or right underneath your eyes, you just wanna gently exhale out of your nose. That's gonna add air to this mask space so you no longer feel that squeeze that's going on on the inside. So going down, I feel it getting tight. I'm just gonna exhale out of my nose. Do you guys see that push off? Yeah. And then that'll release that squeeze that I'm feeling on the inside. When you put your mask on, you wanna make sure that your nose is completely covered. You wanna make sure that the strap is gonna be sitting in this area of your head. If it's too high up, it's gonna make the mask right up. Yeah. And if it's too far low, it's gonna roll your ears. It'll make it a little difficult to clear, but also that'll make it loose so you could start to get water in. Okay. 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 So my mask is on, it's laid right above my lip area. There's no roll, I have no hair in the inside. And then the back strap is gonna be right here. Okay. All right. Now there's no need to equalize any of those air spaces on our ascent or that we don't have to do anything special to equalize them. Expanding air is just going to release on its own. All right. So as we're going up, as long as we're breathing, it's going to equalize itself. All right. Okay. Um, now our lungs is our most important air space to equalize your lungs. It's very easy. You're going to follow the number one rule in scuba diving. Just never hold your breath. Okay. Never hold your breath. Remember that holding your breath can trap air in your lungs. As we go up, that air can expand and that can cause overstretching of the lungs injury. So in order to keep you guys nice and safe, super easy, just breathe. Okay, now remember on scuba, we do only mouth breathing. So you guys will inhale through your mouth and you'll exhale through your mouth. When you exhale, you're gonna see bubbles fly out. Bubbles are good. So the more bubbles I see, the better it is that you are breathing. Now, sometimes people will feel like a shortness of breath underwater. What's probably happening is you're not exhaling all the air out of your lungs, so you're not able to actually take that full breath in. Okay, so if you start to feel that, I want you to imagine you have a birthday cake in front of you with tons of candles, right? Because then how would you guys blow out those candles? And you're gonna push out that breath. Then you yeah. can get that nice, big okay. breath in, okay? I get that way sometimes, snorkeling. I'll have high anxiety, until I get comfortable a minute. Yeah, yeah, and it's just normal. You're like, you kind of, you don't really it. notice it as much, and then you start to feel it, and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm short breathing. Yeah, yeah, so just try to keep um, a nice steady breathing. I like to listen to the sound of the bubbles because you can hear your inhales and hear your exhales. It's 
kind of keep me in a nice um, breathing pattern. If I see that your breathing is a little off, I'll get in front of you and kind of do this for you to mirror my breathing to get your breathing back to slow and regulated. Yes. Okay. Um, now, for some reason, as soon as I put scuba gear on people, they forget how to swim. So we're <laughs> going to talk about swimming. You guys want to make sure you're laying very flat in the water like so. Now, us divers, we are not arm swimmers. Okay, it's your first dive, so if you use your arms, that's okay. But really let the big fin that you're gonna be using do most of the work for you, okay? So we, not, we like to see big scissor kicks propelling us through the water. Don't bicycle kick, all right? Because okay. that's not gonna get you anywhere, especially if we have a little bit of a current. The other thing, I want you guys to look left, right, up, all around, take it all in. But when you're looking up, please make sure that it's from here and not this, right? Because as soon as I raise my chest, my fins go down. If I'm kicking, which way am I gonna go? up right the one direction I don't want to be if you accidentally kick yourself up I will look at you and give you this sign this means stop and then I will do this that means exhale remember that your lungs give you lift when you're yep. breathing in so mm -hmm. if you exhale you'll sink and then we can continue on with swimming okay so keep that in mind as we're swimming around now the first couple minutes of the dive we are going to be swimming over sand which is perfect for us it allows me to get in tune with how you guys breathe and how you guys are kicking. So if I look back at you and it looks like you're really having to work to get off the sand, I'm gonna come up and add some air to this BCD. That's gonna give you some lift, so that way by the time we make it to the reef, you're nice and settled and you're not gonna run into the reef or anything down below. Right. The opposite side of that, if I look back and you're stuck at the top, <laughs> then I need to add a little weight to you and I will come up and add some weight to get you to sunk to a great position that we need for the dive, all right? Now we need to communicate with each other underwater, so these are the hand signs we'll be using. The first one you're going to see a lot, it's a question and an answer. I'm asking, how's it going? How you doing? Are you okay? If you're good, give it back to me. If you're really good, I love to see a shaka, but if you have some trouble, it's this wishy-washy and just point at whatever is bothering you, okay? Stop, remember that never means stop breathing, just stop moving. I'll do this um, if I'm showing you something on the reef, like, oh cool, look at this. Um, or if I'm helping someone with an ear issue or anything like that, okay? Go up, if at any time during the dive, you two are uncomfortable and you wanna get to the surface, you're gonna give me this sign. This means I wanna go up. I am going to grab hold of you and kick us really slow up to the top. Remember that if we go up too fast, it can be harmful for you and harmful for me, so we're gonna go at a nice slow pace. Once we are at the surface, we're gonna add air to this BCD so we can float. It's gonna act as a life jacket. Right. All okay. right? Mm -hmm. um, go down. We're gonna practice five skills standing up in the shallows to make sure we're all on the same page. And then I'll say, let's go down. And then we're gonna do those skills again in like three feet of water. When we're doing those skills, if you're uncomfortable, guess what? I just stand up. I'm in three feet of water. You'll be able to just pop your head up if there's something. It's better something. than thinking you're just going to throw me in 20 feet of water. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Oh. <laughs> Sink or swim. <laughs> Slow down. Take it easy. You'll know if you're swimming too fast if you're in front of me. Okay. All right. I'll be setting the pace according to what current is doing. Remember, the more relaxed our swim, the slower our pace, the more relaxed our breathing, so the longer dive time we have. So this means slow down. I also might use that if you, if I see you're a little nervous here, I might say like, relax, calm down, um, as we breathe through that, all right? Do you see sharks? Um, sharks aren't super common in this bay. I've seen them like a couple times, and normally it's just the nurse sharks, so it's like the big catfish yeah, um, out in the water, them. typically yeah. when they see us, they so um, the other way. So if that's something you're worried about, not normally an issue with us here. We don't have any great whites out there. Oh, yeah. I get it. We watched Jaws before we came. Remember, if you see a shark, you only got to be faster than one person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I take it you're going to kick our butt. <laughs> and, I mean, you're the only guy, so you're kind of outnumbered, yeah. you know, right there. Yeah. <laughs> they right, probably don't prefer male, though, just like we don't prefer <laughs> any. Check your air gauge. We want to check our air early and often so we never run out of air or get ourselves in a hairy situation. So I'll say, hey, how much air do you guys have? Your gauge is gonna be on your left thigh. It's gonna be facing outward. You're gonna grab it and look at it. We do thousands over the arm, hundreds in the air. So if you had 2,500, you're gonna say, I have 2,500. If you had 1,400, it's 1,400. If you have just 700, then it's just hundreds up in the air. 
Now when I ask for your error and you go to look at it and you're like, oh man, I don't remember what she said or I can't read it. Do not freak out. You're just going to go like this. <laughs> right? I'll look at it and see that you're okay and we'll continue onward. So if you don't remember, that's completely fine. Like I said, your gauges are going to be facing outward and I'll be swimming on my back for a good amount of the dive just so I can look at look on it, you guys, make sure everything's going good. And most of the time I just do one of these. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And I can look over and see where you're at. But another way to kind of see gauge where you're at if you're having trouble with the numbers or what it says, your gauge is set up like a stoplight system. So when we see a green light, that normally means go. Okay. So let's keep diving, let's keep blowing bubbles. Yellow is supposed to mean slow down. So when you see uh, your needle close to the yellow, which is at a thousand, you're just gonna tug on my fin, tap me, get my attention and point at your gauge. Let me see if I can see that. Yeah. So sometimes the colors are just a little yeah. bit easier because yeah, the numbers I see are, green, I are see kind yellow. of small. Yeah. And then especially like the little dots, it's like, well, is that a... Would that be three yeah, I or four? I wear readers if something's, but I can see a long, long ways. Yeah, so if that's just kind of go by the colors, like I said, if I'm not sure what you're telling me and you're like giving me baseball signs, I'm just gonna come up, grab your gauge, look at it and be like, you're okay, let's keep going, okay? <laughs> now, if you were to run out of air, like I said, not gonna happen because we're gonna check our air often, you're gonna give me this sign, okay? I have a yellow hose attached to my hip. I'll unclip it and, and we'll just share my tank uh, to make our way back up to the surface. Okay. okay. Um, now, when we do skills, I'm going to go first. I am going to go very slow and over exaggerated. You guys just go normal speed. But underwater, it'll look like this. I'll say you guys watch me and then I'll do the skill and then I'll point at you. When I point at you, it is your turn to shine. If I'm not pointing at you, guess what that means? You don't go, right? Yeah. So we're going to go one at a time in case you have an issue. I can help you work through it. But also I need to be able to see you do the skill to check off that you're good, now we can go on the dive. Okay, and remember there's just gonna be five skills. If you forget a major part of a skill, I'm gonna tell you remember, show you what you forgot and have you do it again. Just to make sure we do it comfortably and confidently in case we needed to use this while we were out and on the dive, all right? Now for the good stuff, right? The aquatic life, the main reason we go diving to see all of these really beautiful and cool things down below. Nice. We ask three things from you guys. Number one, please be mindful that we are in their environment so we don't want to put any of the fish or the animals in a state like they feel like they need to defend themselves. Number two, the coral is a living thing and it takes a really long time to grow. So be mindful of your hand placement, but now you guys are gonna have really big feet that you're not used to accounting for. So careful when you're kicking that you're not hitting or breaking off on any of that coral, right. okay? Stay Number three, we do have some coral that can burn or sting you. So we do have fire coral, looks like little yellow flames, um, burns when you hit it, it's just for a couple days after. And then we also have sea urchin, those big black balls of spikes that I'm sure you guys have seen being from Florida. Now those are two things that don't move. Not really, so we can't say it came out of nowhere and got me. Uh, so just be aware of your positioning. If you see you're close to something you don't wanna be near, just turn that head up and kick really big in the opposite direction and that'll get you out of the way. Or if you feel me shove you, just go with whatever direction I'm pushing you. It's because I'm trying to get you out of the way. That's why the beginning of the dive is going to be really nice for us to kind of get in tune with how we are. Right. So we're not running into anything once we're all ready. Okay. All right. Um, now I can guarantee that we're going to see fish, sand, water, and coral. I got those all day long. The other things don't come to work as much as I do, but for the bigger <laughs> stuff you can see we have turtle. Stingray, that's going to be your southern rays. Sometimes we get eagle rays on the reef. Those are the big blue ones with the white spots uh, on them. Yeah. Eels, we got a lot of eels. Those are going to be uh, like white, black spots, bright green over the top of the tail. Um, octopus. All right, oh. sometimes we see some squid. For your bigger fish that we see out on the reef, you're going to see some barracuda. All right, as well as some tarpon that are typically going to be above us. Uh, last week, I haven't seen him this week, but last week we did have a big Goliath grouper out there. Wow. Those are really big fish. It was really yeah. cool to see him kind of, I think our bubble started it because it was like, zoom. Mm. Um, but really cool to see. And then lots of tropical fish, butterflies, trumpets, tangs, wrasses, basilets. Um, my favorite fish is going to be your queen angelfish. Uh, she's like bright oh, yeah. purple coloring. So if I see her, I'm going to give you a heart. So you guys know that that's my fish. Um, and then if you guys see something that you really like, you can point at it, give me this, I'll give you the sign for it and tell you about it when we make our way back up. All cool. right, okay. any questions? 
over there. Mm -hmm. So far, so good. All right. So I'm going to talk about your dive gear just so you guys are familiar and kind of mm -hmm. get used to hearing the terms of what we're going to be using in the water. The first part about your gear is your tank. Your tank is filled with air, the same air that we're breathing out, so it's compressed. From your tank, we then have your BCD, okay? Um, underwater, I will control it for you guys, helping control your buoyancy. But remember, anytime that you're at the surface, we want to be floating, so we don't have to work hard to be at the surface. So on the left-hand side of the BCD is a line that looks like a slinky. That's your LPI, your low pressure inflator. It's what adds air or takes air out of the BCD. Okay. So if you're trying to find it, a good uh, way to find it is just to make an L, go to the center of your chest and lift up and you'll pick it up on your arm, okay? Now the button that's below the hole here is what adds air to the BCD. So I'm gonna push it with my thumb. Oh, wow. I get nice and fluffy, a little fluffy marshmallow, and that's gonna keep me floating at the surface, okay? okay? Now whenever I'm ready to go down, you're gonna hold it high above your head, keep your body straight up and down, and you're gonna press on the top button here. Water pressure is then gonna help push against the BCD, pushing all the air out until you're completely sunk underwater. Okay. Now what's important is this button is not an elevator button. All right. So when you want to come up from the bottom, we do not use that button to get there. It's going to shoot you up way too quick. Right. Remember if we want to go up, it's this sign. We kick. Then once our head breaks the surface, then go crazy on the button until you're all the way floated. Okay. 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 Also on the left hand side of your gear is going to be that gauge that we talked about. We have your pressure gauge here, how mm -hmm. much air you have. And if you guys wanted to know how deep you were cruising, you could look at your depth gauge right up here. Okay. Some of you might have a compass on the other side you won't need. I'm your underwater compass for you guys today. Uh, I, won't, I haven't got lost this week yet. So. All right, Good on your know. right hand side is gonna be your regulator. Okay, I'm just gonna call it reg. This regulator's a mouthful of sand. Yeah. All right, your reg is your best friend, the thing that we wanna keep in our mouth at all times, all right? now. The first skill that you guys are going to do underwater for me is super easy. I want to see with your mask and your reggin that you're able to equalize your ears. Okay? Okay. So when I equalize, do I blow out of my nose or my mouth? Nose. Nose. Yeah, but when people have this in their mouth, they want to blow out of their mouth. So make sure it's out of your nose. So I will do this. And then you guys will go. Once you do it, I'm going to do this after you equalize. This is me asking, did you feel that in your ears? If you did, give it back to me. If you didn't, give me one of these so we can figure out what's going on that you're not able to equalize, okay? okay? The next skill, what if you get water in your mask? Remind me when we get downstairs to give you some silicone. It's gonna help with your facial okay. hair to help with that seal a little bit, right. okay? Um, so if you get water in your mask, we wanna be able to get the water out at depth rather than having to go up to the top every time. So the way that we do that is we create a seal by pushing the top of our mask into our face. I'm then gonna look up to the sky and I'm gonna continuously blow out of my nose. That's gonna push all that water out and downward. Now you can use two fingers at the corners or you can use one hand across like you're being dramatic. Look up and <laughs> blow okay. out of your nose, okay? Make sure when you're pressing that you're not doing this. Oh yeah. You see what I just did there? Yeah. Um, and then now you're gonna have a lot of water in. Now it's not positioned on your face. It's just to push into your face as I look up. Okay. okay? The next three skills are going to involve our regulator. What if I get water in here? Maybe one of us accidentally bumps each other, we get a little water in. We need to know how to get the water out. So in order for us to know what it's like for water to be in here, we're going to have to put water in it by taking it out. So before I do that, it's probably a good idea that my lungs are full of air, so I'm going to make sure I take a really big breath in. I'm gonna put that mouthpiece to the sand. Now remember, we never wanna hold our breath, so I want you to imagine you have a straw in between your lips, you're blowing small bubbles out, right? So I'm gonna let a couple bubbles out. I'm gonna put it back in and I'm gonna yell the number two. Two! And then I can breathe. You yeah. blow real yeah. hard? Okay. Yeah, just like when you're snorkeling. When you're snorkeling, and you yeah. Yep. But so I say yell the number two just because sometimes we get people that haven't ever snorkeled before. So if I just make them yell too, it puts their mouth in the right position to blast the water out. But just like when you're snorkeling, okay. that's gonna blast the water out of your vent. That and way you gotta you, you gotta take it out and point it downward. Yes, if you face you it that? upward. So if you just like take it out and go like this, water pressure is gonna push against this purge button, and you're just gonna lose a bunch of air. You're gonna see bubbles flying everywhere. So when you take it out, I just automatically 
face it down. You don't have to keep it out for a minute, 30 seconds. It's just a couple bubbles, put it back in, and then I can breathe. Okay. The second way that we do that, okay, is going to be the purge button. You guys are going to have big S's on the center of your regulator. So that's just like the two method, but it does it for you. So let's say your reg was out for a long time and you went to put it back in and you didn't have the breath to, right? Well, then I'm just going to press the button and then it'll do it for me. Okay, so I'm going to show you that one. Out, I'm blowing small bubbles. I'm going to put it back in. <laughs> and then I breathe. <laughs> that's like, yeah, that's a good blast. Uh, dry air right to the throat. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we want to be able to find this. Let's say it completely fell out of our mouth. We want to be able to locate it, put it back in, and clear it. So we're going to practice in a controlled setting. So what we're going to do is take a breath in. I'm going to take it out, and then I'm going to toss it. Okay, when I toss it, it falls really close to all this bulkiness that I have going on, and it can be a little hard for me to find. So what you're gonna do is lean really hard to the right. That's gonna cause this regulator to now dangle a little bit more freely away from all of this, okay? My hand's gonna come out. I'm gonna touch my knee, go towards my butt, and come around like I'm throwing a baseball. It's gonna be dangling over my arm, so don't forget to look down. You're then gonna grab it, put it back in, yell the number two, press the button, a mixture of both, whatever works for you to get the water out of that regulator, okay? Now, please remember, we are gonna practice these skills standing up out of the water to make sure we're all on the same page because okay. I know that was a lot of information I just threw yeah. at you. Yeah. Yeah. Then we'll go under and one at a time, we'll go through the skills. Remember, I will always demonstrate everything first, so you will get to see me go through those. Oh, I forgot to take my necklace off. Okay. We took all our jewelry, but no. Yeah. She got your necklace, so is um we took all our jewelry off because, you Oh, know, um, I dive. With my jewelry, my bracelets, okay, my necklace. Uh, I so we're good on this? Off. We're not going to have a barracuda try and tell? No, no. <laughs> it'll be fine. Um, did you guys want wetsuits? Whatever you think. Um, do you get cold easy? Yeah. Then yes, we're going to go with wetsuits. Okay. Only shorties. That's cool. That way you have a comfortable dive. You don't want to get yeah. through the dive and... Yeah. Then you're gonna then you're gonna start breathing. Well, heavier. we were wondering if the water, how cold it was and stuff too. So yeah, it's that's like cool. It'd probably be good to have. Seventy nine degrees. I'll be in one. Um, so if you do get cold and see you guys being from Florida, I would definitely at least put a shorty on. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right, guys. So we went over a lot. I'm gonna hit our bullet reminders, and then we're gonna get ready to go have some fun. Number one, remember to breathe. Always Never hold breathe. your breath. Mm -hmm. Bubbles are our friends. Mm -hmm. Number two, equalize your ears early and often. Be as proactive as you can with that, guys. Every couple feet, make sure that you're equalizing. Remember, I'll also remind you. Mm -hmm. Number three, do not touch the coral. We don't want to hurt it or ourselves. Number four, stay behind or beside me because it's just you two. You got one on each side or however you guys want to do. Okay. Um, number five, do not go to the surface alone. Remember that if you want to go up, it's this sign, okay? And we go really slow up to the top together. So please be mindful if I'm asking, how's it going? Try not to give me this. I know it's right. a habit. People yeah. are like, thumbs up. I yeah. can normally tell by your face if you're like, yeah, or if you're like, right. <laughs> <laughs> you see there's a difference there, okay? Um, number six, signal if something is wrong. This sign and just point at whatever is bothering you. We're going to try to solve our problems down below, but if at one point you don't know what I'm saying, I don't know what you're saying, I'll say, let's just go up and we'll talk about it, okay? Um, Number seven, look around, don't get tunnel vision. This is huge for first time divers. A lot of first time divers get real focused just right here. Okay, so they miss the stingray and the sand or the tarpon above this. So make sure you guys are looking left, right, up, all around, but be mindful that you're not swimming in that upward position, okay? Number eight, tips, just like everyone else in the service industry, that is how I make my living. So if you guys enjoyed your time with me, it's always greatly appreciated. Um, be a dolphin today. We're going to be underwater mermaids. We're going to have a lot of fun. I will have a noise maker on me. It's going to sound like a click, 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 click. If you hear that, look my way. It's me trying to get your attention. Maybe I want to pull you in an opposite direction. But the really fun part when I do it is something really cool is swimming by and I want to get your attention for you to see it. Okay. All right. So if you hear that click, 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 look my way and you might see me like pointing or doing so, or I'll be like. So is the current real bad here? Or? Um, no. Um, sometimes the current does, you know, will pick up. Normally on this reef, we have ways to kind of hide, hide from it or um, navigate the reef in a way. Kind of like getting not, out of the wind. That we're not feeling yeah. like, kind of like getting out of the wind. We're not feeling the effects of it. Normally at this time slot that you guys are in, 
it's normally not much current. Good. Okay. Later throughout the day, it does pick up. Yeah. Um, but this That's time what's frame, always kind of got me. I used to uh, do a lot of snorkeling in the Keys and had a guy jump off the boat one time to get his flipper. He dropped it. it took, yeah. It took so, off so luckily for here, because we have, you can see like the, the island formation back behind you. Mm -hmm. And this coming out here, it's going to block a lot of that that we normally okay. That's that we good normally for introduction. Um, so yeah, if you see me doing a weird kind of zigzaggy, it's because I'm just trying to keep us away from having a fight in that current. Okay. Um, but normally for the most part in the morning, it's super, uh, super easy for us. I am going to have a dive flag float with us that says divers are down. Um, it has a line attached to it. So if you're having some issues, I might have you grab onto the line to help pull yourself down to equalize a little bit better. Um, or if I need to help one of you with something, I'll have the other one grab onto it. Um, so also too, so that way jet skis and stuff know that we have divers down in the bay. They're a little more cautious when they're in our area. Okay. All right. Do you okay. guys have any questions? I guess that's it. Do you guys need to go to the bathroom before we get started? Probably, we should probably try. <laughs> I <would. laughs> Even yeah. if it's just a little bee. <laughs> so I'm gonna walk you guys to the bathroom. We're gonna use the one inside the aquarium. We're gonna, we're gonna put on our suits And anyway, then you'll put too, on right? your wetsuits. Okay. I'll get you guys fins, get your mask, we'll start the walking the way. Or? No, so we use warm water fins basically, or like closed, um, closed fins, so we okay. don't have, you don't put those underneath. Okay. I just um, read that we needed to bring them, so we did. Some places on island, there is a very rocky entry into the into the water. We are mm -hmm. very fortunate here. It's nice, soft, so sand. fluffy sand. Good. Um, okay. So we don't have. So we that, can put these back in our bag. So yeah, you can put those in your bag whenever you guys are done with them. Okay. okay. All right. You guys are ready. Let me. Uh, All right.